Hey, you guys, it's your girl, Megan James, and you are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast. Period. <laughs> and we have my girl, Roly Poly, today from Zeus Network, from, um, what is it, Real Chance I Love. One more chance oh. in Baddies South and Baddies West. And Baddies East, <laughs> North, South, West, East, Any North. Motherfucking all the baddies, period. <laughs> okay, cool. So I always like to start off my guests with the game. Uh, the first game we're going to play today is Two Truths and a Lie. Oh. So we're going to go back and forth about Two Truths and a Lie. And if you guess right, no shot. If you guess wrong, you got to take a shot. Okay. So this episode is... Uh, sponsored by Revanche, not Revenge, Revanche, mm. Cognac. Do you like Hennessy or Douce? I do. Well, this is better, okay? okay? It is called Revanche. It's a Cognac, so actually it's not even open yet. I forgot to open this shit, but. Which is good. I'm good, though. Mm. That look good. I don't know why it really good. So it's smooth. And I don't really like, I'm not a Cognac drinker, but this is fire. And it's a black-owned brand, like women. Own black owned oh, so we fuck with that's what that's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, you go first. Two truths and a lie. Let me try to guess. Okay, two truths and a lie. Um, ooh, I slept with one of the zoo security guards. Keep going. Any two truths and a um, lie? Um, a lie. I'm 25. Um. You can't tell me what's a lie. You just say three things and I have to tell you what I think the lie is. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. So now that we know, okay, th- th- let me read, let me give you the game again. <laughs> okay. okay, this is the game, Roly. <laughs> Each person takes turns sharing three statements about themselves, two of which are true and one which is false. The person has to guess which statement is a lie. Whoever is right. The other person has to take a shot. I made two statements. That wasn't two statements? Yeah, but I already know which... Okay, just keep... Oh, you already know. You already know my age. This is what you said. You were like, well, a lie is that I'm 25. Oh, a lie. Okay, okay. So you told it on yourself. Okay, do it again. (laughs) Do it again. (laughs) All right. So I can't say a lie or a truth. Don't say nothing. Just give me three statements and I'm going to try to guess the lie. Um, So you slept with a zoo security guard? How you know that's the lie? I'm asking because the lie is that you're 25, (laughs) bitch. That was the lie. You said three or two. I Am I not listening to shit? You're Look. not listening, Rolly. Okay, Rolly. <laughs> give me three statements. Two of them true, one of them lie. Don't tell me what is which. Two I got to guess. True. I got to guess what, what the lies is. Okay. Okay. All right. My favorite food is pasta. One statement. Um, We're going to do the zoo security. Two statements. Two statements. And um, shit. I got my master's in college. Okay, so the lies that you got your master's in college. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so since I got it right, you got to take a shot, bitch. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Damn. I could have came up with some better lies. You, you could have. I could have. But I it didn't is... know about this Zeus security guard dick. Because obviously <laughs> the people at Zeus got good dick. Because everybody be fucking everybody over there from what I heard. Oh. I have no comment about that. Oh, so, you gonna, so you're pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth. Okay, you can I'm gonna just fifth. say this: if if I did, me and this person have been on each other for a long time. So it's it's a long time as in since you started One Chance of Love. Yes. How many years ago was that? Like almost four. Really? Like, it was that long ago. Four years ago. Okay, we're gonna skip over the Zeus people fucking everybody. <laughs> we'll skip over that. Okay. So if I did. If you did, yeah, because we don't know. Okay, so we're going to go into your personal background. Okay, so can you tell us about your upbringing and early years um, and, like, how that influenced your uh, career path in life? Um, I really, like, every a lot of other people, I came from a fucked up background, you know, the ghetto and shit like that. I grew up with three sisters. Um, we never really had our dads in the home, so it was just me, my mom, and my sisters. Um I really always felt like I was supposed to do something in life. I just didn't know what it was. So, like, ever since, like, me growing up, I always put myself into activities, uh, drama classes, anything, like, anything I get my hands on. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know, seeing my family uh, still stuck in that day of age of, you know, being, you know, just kind of like working nine to fives and doing whatever they got to do to survive. I felt like I was, I I wanted to do something more than to break that cycle and to show, you know, my family, like we can actually get out there and branch out and, you know, work and do exciting shit and I have to struggle every fucking day. So, um, I I had a, a, like I said, a rough upbringing. I got bullied a lot when I was plus, when I was, uh, in middle school, high Mm -hmm. school, elementary shit, damn near throughout my whole time of being in school. And it built up my confidence. It didn't break me down. It built me up because I felt like 
if these people are paying so much attention to me, then... Then I'm popping. Then I'm popping. Period. So, might as well him. <laughs> okay. So, um, how did you first get into daytime TV and what was your experience like... Um, with Jerry Springer and Face the Truth. Because my nigga Jerry Springer passed. Yes. Oh my God. Like, let's pour some up for Jerry. Let's pour some up for Jerry. He was literally, bro. like, literally my, like, childhood. I grew up on Jerry Springer. Icon, for real. Yeah. And 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 it was hard seeing that he passed. I didn't even know he was sick. That was the crazy thing. I did not know he was sick. I thought he passed of old age. No? No, he passed of cancer. Oh, that's so sad. Yes, he had cancer. So, sh- shout out to shout Jerry out to and the family. Springer. But how was that experience on Jerry Springer? <laughs> Girl, that was the and most crazy. And how old were you on that show? I think I was like 24. That was the most craziest shit I've ever done in my life. I got there. I was so excited because I'm I'm like watching Jerry and I'm thinking like, damn, I'm finna be on there looking for love. You know, doing like a little segment. First of all, it was scripted. So I had to practice a few times before I went out. So it was scripted. Um, but it was fun as hell. It was different from me actually watching on the TV and being there. But <laughs> what killed me was they let the guy choose the food for me to dance in. He chose fettuccine. So <laughs> I asked him, I said, why the fuck did you choose fettuccine? He's like, because they asked my favorite food. And that's when I came up off the dome. And I'm like, fuck it. But me and him, really good friends. I'm still friends with him to this day. And um, it was an experience. And face the truth, that was, I really wanted to get my feet in the door with that one. Mm-hmm. Um, I really was stripping. I really was a plus size stripper in Vegas. I don't know if people- You was making them dollars, bitch. Honey, thousands, <laughs> walking out, bitches hated me. All the other plus size girls hated me because I was making whatever, I was doing whatever I, I know how to sell sex. Mm-hmm. So just cause I'm a plus size girl don't mean that. So Face the Truth was me debuting myself out there as GMA him. I'm a model, I'm a stripper, I'm this, I'm that. And I, I, I wanted to debut myself. And I feel like after that, it kind of gave me a little bit of, okay, that's who she is. So when I got uh, a message from Zeus, that's when it kind of like went up because I didn't even audition for, for nothing for them. Right. So how did those experiences, like your two daytime TV experiences, um, help your approach to future reality TV? Like, did you feel like you went into Zeus knowing what the fuck you was doing already? or like? I feel like I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I did do One More Chance, I didn't know that it was, like Chance wasn't really looking for love. Mm. I feel like, you know, I, I really wanted to try to find love with him because I was attracted to him. And I oh, so like, you really liked him? Yeah, I really did like him. Oh, and, wow. And, and I... I really wanted to try. And when I seen it, I'm like, oh, so this is entertainment. I know how to be entertaining. So that's where I just took it then. And from there, I was like, just fuck it. So what did you learn from the One More Chance show? Don't trust no nigga now. That's what I learned. Because these niggas ain't shit. And I also learned that I'm not about to be chasing after no nigga that's chasing after like 20 different bitches on the show. Who's your favorite bitch on the show and your least favorite? On One More Chance? Uh, which season one or two? Let's either one. So my favorite from season one. Never mind, none of them. Well, let me stop lying. Uh, Shira, she's now a WWE wrestler. Okay, she. She was she signed to Triple H, so she was my favorite. I literally connected with her. That's why I said let me stop lying because I connected with her on it off camera like mm-hmm. spiritually. Mm-hmm. Um, my second for um my season two was Slim, of course. Mm-hmm. That's my sister. Always gonna be my sister. Um, baddies, I don't have a favorite. Like, who did you not like on um one and two of Chance? Oh my God, Jesus! Who's the worst bitch? On there? The worst bitch on there that I. <laughs> her name is fucking Dottie. She's a weirdo. <laughs> I swear to God, Chance named her Dottie because she came on there with her mom. So, yeah, she came on there with her mom looking for love with her mama from the same dick. And she was just flat out weird. I let her come to my house and everything. Bitch what about season weird. two? Oh, that was season two. Season one, season one, I'm going to say the worst mm-hmm. that got on my nerves the most. And we don't beef no more because, you know, we passed that shit, which was Yodela. Mm-hmm. Uh, we fought, of course, at the reunion. Turned that shit up. I think Yodella is it. so pretty, but she did some weird shit like before. Ooh, like, wow. I, I think she's beautiful. I think she's a beautiful girl. But like, I had tweeted something on Twitter, and I love Twitter. It's like my favorite social media app. And Yodella took the exact tweet and like posted it under a comment and got like a whole bunch of likes under it. And it was literally the my, like my exact words. 
And so wow. I was like, it's giving weird. Like, who do like it's giving copyright <laughs> copyright written. I feel like I feel like people do that shit. They'll be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And they see something that they feel like that they would have said. Yeah, that they would have said, and then they'll take it and like, oh well, that was cool what you said. Like, no, that person didn't really say that. <laughs> that was somebody else, and they took it off their page. But um, but I think she's beautiful. I think she's no, she's and I liked she's her definitely on the show. Beautiful. She's a beautiful girl, and yeah. she's very strong minded. I can say that much. She's very very strong minded. So how did you end up on Baddies? Um, I ended up on Baddies. Of did course. you watch the season that I was only on one episode? I watched that episode only. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I swear to God, I was like, I watched it and then it was just like boring. Mm-hmm. It was so fucking boring. And then when they brought Chu, it was like, Megan, <laughs> Megan wanted to turn this on. She was like, So you wanna fight or what? <laughs> I'm and like, yes. So I watched that episode. Mm-hmm. I feel like that episode was the best episode because it was more of a um, conversation going on, more shit. You know, I feel like you came in and you riled it up. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I skipped through that whole motherfucking season. I promise you. So how did you end up on the show? I ended up on the show, of course, because Zeus called me. Um, I wanted to debut my music more and kind of get out there a little bit more. And then plus, on top of that, I know that the Bad Girls Club fans are way completely different from the Zeus fans. Mm-hmm. So they they literally will literally support. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let me at least try to get on him because I, I always wanted to be on Bad Girls Club. So let me get on Baddies. And see, you know, if this is how Bad Girls Club is. So that's that's why I wanted to do it. Um. So how's your experience being a cast member on Baddie South season three and then doing the um, transition into Baddie's West? Like what were the difference in the girls and, and everything? So that was season two when I first did it. It was Baddie South and it was completely chaos. Betty South. <laughs> Betty South was chaos. Mm-hmm. I felt like I did not have a great time because um, I was literally going through something right now. I had just lost somebody that I was, you know, with for a while. And he died during One More Chance season two while I was filming. Mm-hmm. So after that, I kind of wasn't in that mind state, but I needed the money. So I'm going to I'm gonna take the job. Mm-hmm. So I felt like I didn't get a, a, enough time to be myself and have fun. So... That's why. So how do you like mentally prepare yourself for something like Bad Girls Club? Because I wasn't ready when I went, but I was already a little off. So I felt like I was cool. But after being in that house for so long with no cell, because ours was way different. Like no cell phone, no radio, no internet. No radio? No, we couldn't smoke weed. We couldn't do anything that y'all could do. Oh, shit. And so like we were completely isolated from like the world. Oh my God, what the fuck? We were That's com- that alcohol. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> we were completely uh, isolated from the world. And so there's no way you can literally mentally prepare yourself for that unless you've been in jail before. Oh, yeah. But y'all got a little freedom <laughs> over there. <laughs> Look, I've been in jail before. I think that's how I mentally prepare <laughs> myself. I don't know. I like jail. I feel like I go to jail and I make friends. Yes. <laughs> I make friends with the crazy bitches. Literally, I just went to jail not too long ago. And I had so many friends in there for one day. Literally, one day. Girl, what did you go to jail for? I beat the hell out of my landlord. But that happened a year ago. And I was on the run. And they finally caught me. So that's why. But, girl. So how have your personal relationships been affected by, like, your involvement in reality TV? I've lost a lot of friends. Why, why is that? Um, because they feel like that I don't call them as much anymore is because I'm always busy and I'm always on a roll and they don't understand that because they don't have to do this shit and they don't understand like how tired I really am. So Mm -hmm. I lost a lot of friends and then there's a lot of people that wanted me to put them on and I can't, like I'm not in a position to do that. So lost a lot of friends from that too. So like in the entertainment industry, like who are your biggest like inspirations and like role models and why of course my virgo queen beyonce period i, I love, love virgo. her i love, I love virgo beyonce. Period. um i would say beyonce with everything because she's very influential you know mm. what i'm saying like she can literally do every fucking thing and i feel like i wonder if, if she can paint she probably can she probably can she probably can paint a fucking beautiful ass portrait i feel like she's definitely like the still the it girl because at the end of the day, Beyonce gonna do what the fuck Beyonce gonna do. And she gonna do it very well. Mm-hmm. And I feel like she's very influential to me. She's always been influential to me since I've been a kid. Like when I, I, I sing, every time I sung, I sung Beyonce songs because mm-hmm. she influenced me to sing. Acting, all that other stuff. But other than that, like Viola Davis, um, Tyler Perry, I have a lot of strong minded people that I look up to because they came from nothing, mm-hmm. literally. And now they're at the fucking top. So, 
Put your mind to it. You can do anything. Period. How did you get into music, my love? Oh, man. Because Girl. I was fucking with your rap now. <laughs> I told myself how to rap. I didn't know how to rap at first. I didn't know how to rap uh, until I was like 22. And it just went up from there. I would literally watch the girls from Queen of the Ring in New York, see how they flow go, how they subliminals go, how they eat. And that's how I learned how to rap. Mm -hmm. Other than that, like, I didn't even have a rap career at first. I didn't even have I a love So you could sing? Yes, I could sing. Can you bust us a little note? No, I can't not. I thought you said you was going to be open, bitch. That Beyonce, is open, Beyonce bitch. might be watching you right now. Here's your chance, bitch. Baby. Oh, girl. <laughs> hell no. Nah. Hell no, nah, bitch. Okay. Okay, so the next segment is fan questions and rumors. So this is my favorite segment because it get a little messy. It get a little messy. Okay, okay, so I want to know, why have you said that you're going to quit Zeus multiple times, but you still participating in their shows and auditions? Why did I knew this question was coming? <laughs> you quitting or you not? Okay, this is about my third time quitting. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> I'm quit. I'm <laughs> done with you. Um, it's because I am a very impatient person. And I feel like when I don't get what I want, I just was like, fuck it. I'm going to just go find another source. I've always been like that. But I also have to learn that patience is key. And I don't have that. And I'm still learning. So um, it had nothing to do with, oh, she's not getting a show or she's not this and that. Zeus always look out for me. It's just that I be thinking, like, fuck. Like, they not about to play with me. They not about to do this. And this is really me. So, But do they be playing? No. Honestly, you got to look at it. I started with Zeus almost four years ago. And when we started, it was tiny, very tiny. Nobody was barely watching it. J uh, Jocelyn's show was out. They was watching Jocelyn's show. That's how I found out about it. And they had the comedy shows. Mm -hmm. um, to build, it's like building a village. It takes time. Mm -hmm. You got to build all that shit up. So I feel like with a little bit of time that they take it with me, yes, it's too much time taken up because I should have been had a fucking show. Mm -hmm. But I still do have a show coming out on Zeus. I just feel like I'm just too impatient. Okay, cool. So, um, what's tea on that show that you got coming out on Zeus, babe? So, it's what a, is the concept? It's a couple of different concepts that I have pitched, mm -hmm. and and that's another reason why it's taking so long. Because I want to do everything. Mm -hmm. I want to do a plus size show. I want to do a love show, and I also want to do like a docu series about my life because a lot of people don't know nothing about me. Well, I'm, now they do. Thanks I'm very private. Me. Yes, thanks to you, Megan. <laughs> and now I'm over here sleeping with people. <laughs> but no, I feel like um, I feel like I want to do a lot of different things, and I, I'm just overwhelming myself. So I need to sit down, like my CEO told me, sit my ass down, figure mm -hmm. out what I want to do, come to him when I'm ready, and then with that's the whole when, plan. Yes. So I'm still planning everything right now, but my show is coming out on Zeus. Um. So what is your current relationship with Slim? Like, what's tea? My current relationship with Slim is still the same. We talk, we text, we barely see each other because she lives in Maryland, I live in Vegas. But other than that, like, that's still my sister. I, I'm not going to put no bitch above her. We have an understanding on how I stand on shit and how she stand on shit. Mm -hmm. So now we can't get mad at each other. It mm -hmm. can't be no, no type of distance. It can't be nothing going on because we understand each other. And that's why I said a real friend will understand instead of a bitch be like, oh, friend because you're talking to her like no it's not even that bitch like <laughs> I, I'm, I love you and I'm gonna put you before this bitch but I, I need to network and I need to get around and I need to be able to work with the people that I'm working with and make sure that I get this shit done because I don't want to have to keep being like how stunner girl and Tommy was it was ridiculous so how was they because oh, I didn't really watch much of it uh, Jesus Christ I'm so they know. cool or they not cool they are cool girls that's the thing but they're not cool together Tommy and stunner are they no. Oh, they don't fuck with you. No. Still. They're cool girls. They they I feel like they're both very talented girls. They both got something to offer, but it's mm -hmm. just that they can't correspond with each other. They can't work with each other, so there's no money to be made. Mm -hmm. Like it's all a waste of time. Right. Like I couldn't stand it. But shit. do you think it was like the fight over like who's the most popping? Like no. It was about the auditions because Tommy did try to attack Stunner Girl during the auditions. So Stunner was trying to get her lick back the whole time. Yeah, she was trying to get her lick back. And I felt like that was the only problem with Tommy. But the problem with the other girl, it was just like, eh, kind of like a following type situation. So it was kind of like super messy all the way through. Like, girl, it was just a mess. So um, how do you feel comfortable being or getting back cool people that you have fought? Oh, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, Especially feel, if you... Cause I'm not being friends with no bitch that beat my ass. Now, if I beat your ass and you want to come back and be my friend, that's cool. Yeah, sometimes you got to beat them 
just to get their respect. I feel like a lot of people try you because of who you are. Mm -hmm. And you have such a big name. So a bitch see you on the street, Megan, they'll try to try you just because. And really, in real life, that bitch like you. She yeah. respects you. on God. And that's how it really is on mm -hmm. baddies. Like, bitches really like and respect each other. It's just that it's that moment that you got to give something on TV to be somebody. Like, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So that's I feel like that's their motive. So you feel like... Um Baddies is like mostly scripted. Like, what would you say? No, it's not scripted. It's mm -hmm. crazy because we act, what we really go through, we really go through that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, we really be fucking fighting. I feel like people have different intentions coming in. People want to be a star. People want to be seen the most. People want to be an opportunist. People want to just kind of be themselves. So it's a lot of different personalities going on. But you got to watch out for the ones that's opportunists and that want to just, you know, be a star and be shown. They'll do anything. So what do you feel like um, DJ Sky High's purpose was on Baddies? Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. I feel like her purpose was to be a baddie, but she got called in for the wrong thing, which was to be Krishan's babysitter. Um, other than that, I felt like she really wanted to be a baddie and she felt like she wasn't being treated like a baddie. But if you're there to do a DJ job, you're not a baddie. You're a DJ. But she was on the road with you guys, right? She was on the road with us, but it was like the agreement for for them wasn't to be a baddie. So if anybody noticed that when before the show debuted it, they wasn't posting her. It was just most of the, the all the rest of the girls and then she kind of felt offended like oh y'all not posting me i'm a baddie da, da, da. so they started posting her mm -hmm. eventually but yeah at first she was not supposed to be a baddie she was just supposed to be a dj and to keep krishan there and just in case she get mad and leave mm -hmm. that was the only reason why so um how has being on baddies affected you and like other realms of like work and entertainment because for me it has hindered and hurt me like mm -hmm. i mean i was on bad girls club over 10 years ago and I remember, like, first getting into the entertainment industry, nobody took me serious. Like, everybody thought we were jokes. Like, we weren't able to book, like, movie jobs and, and like, modeling gigs. We weren't able to book anything. But, like, I feel like we're, like, in a different generation where it's more accepted. Yeah. And, like, you know, girls like Dream Doll and, like, the Claremont Twins and... I love um, Claremont Twins. They are fire. <laughs> but they're so... They're, like, now able to actually book real industry jobs. So, yeah. like, what do you feel like Baddies has done for you in, in that, like, in those type of situations? I feel like I have the same type of situation going on. I had a couple of uh, interviews with major, not networks, but movies and all the other stuff like that. And they told me the same exact thing. You know, we want to see you in a different light. They don't want to see me fighting and all the other shit like that. And I'm like, completely understand because, and I, I started taking acting classes too. That's another reason why I'm like, I'm going to show these people that I'm not just this. But it is the same thing. I get turned down a lot because of the show that I'm on. And if I would have stayed on the love show, it probably would have been a little bit more better. I still was fighting on there, but people don't see me. They see the aggressive bitch, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to hire me for nothing. Like, But gladly, I got a role this year, a major role, and I'm excited about it. And I just feel like maybe that's a calling for me to start changing it up. Right. So, um... <laughs> Where are you at, Megan? <laughs> okay, so as being a plus size woman amongst your cast members, how do you maintain your confidence and self esteem? And what advice would you give others who may struggle with their body image? Let me tell y'all something. I don't be worried about not none of them hoes. They can walk <laughs> around with the fattest asses, the skinniest waist, the prettiest face, the fattest lips, whatever. I know me. I know myself. I know my confidence. I know my body. I know my. Pussy. Period. Motherfucker. I promise you, your nigga not coming home. Come home. <laughs> but <laughs> it's 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 the fact that if a female feel like she gotta be in competition with me, that just shows her low self-esteem. Because bitch, I'm a big girl. And a lot of people downgrade big girls nowadays. We beautiful as women. And I feel like a lot of women should stand up for what they stand on. If you confident, be confident. If you're not, shit, gain some confidence, go get surgery, do whatever the fuck you gotta do to gain that confidence. So the next bitch ain't got nothing to say to you. You know what I'm Period. saying? Period. That's how I feel. So the next segment is going to be about challenges and successes. And um, with May being Mental Health Awareness Month, we're going to talk about yeah. a little bit of mental health um, stuff. Okay? Okay. So you mentioned dealing with depression and how – wait, you've mentioned dealing with depression and how it can be ampl amplified by reality TV. Can you tell us more about your experience with this and how you cope with it? Yeah. So I've been dealing with depression since I was a little girl. Um 
I feel like it runs in my family because majority of my sisters deal with it and my mom too. Mm -hmm. um, how I cope with it is I don't. I take time for myself. I go cry it out. I go be mad. I might scream somewhere. And then I'll go do what the fuck I got to do. I pull myself back together. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's no coping with it unless you really, 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 really convince yourself that everything is okay. And that may be just for the moment. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like... I like to keep positive people around me. I like to keep positive things around me. And when I do go to work, that is the most negative shit that I can have around <laughs> me. I swear to God. Like, so it's it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. And I try to express to some of the girls that I get a little bit close with how I feel and stuff like that. And luckily, I literally click with one. And nobody would really even, they'd be surprised it was Scotty. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Scotty understands me. And it's the fucking craziest shit. We done got to a, fu a fight last year. And that girl understands me. And I never got the time to take the time out to get to know her. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of us deal with the same things. But we just so scared to come out with it. That's just how it is. Then how do you handle like the criticism and the backlash from, from being on baddies? Because I know you have like fans and you also have haters. Like how do you deal with the trolls? Jesus. I block them. <laughs> I read it and then I block them and then I smoke a blunt. Go on about my day. I might think about what they said. Because of the depression, mm -hmm. but I will get over it quickly. Like, it's not something that I'll cry about. People say shit about people all day. I'd have been bullied since, excuse me, I haven't been bullied since elementary. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody fucking hurt my feelings no more. Like, nobody can't hurt my feelings no more. Maybe if I'm in love with a man or my child or something like that, they could probably hurt my feelings, but can't nobody hurt my feelings no more. So, you have a son, right? Mm -hmm. How's your son? 14. So how is it like being kind of famous, a reality TV star, and having a 14-year-old son? <laughs> like, does he know you're famous? He knows. He uses he uses it to his advantage for <laughs> girls. <laughs> He's like, my mom's on daddy. He called me one day. He's like, mom. I'm like, yeah, what, what you He's want like, to say? like, can you talk to my girlfriend? No, it was like 10 bitches in the back screaming. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Don't call me again. <laughs> <laughs> But I love it. Like, I feel like he he knows how to handle it. And when we out and people ask for pictures and stuff, he just be so annoyed. Because he like, oh, my God, they finna try to sit here and talk to my mom for a long time. But mm -hmm. it's cool, though. He loves it. <laughs> so what have been, like, some of the biggest, like, successes and highlights in your, like, in your entertainment career? I would have to say it was baddies. Mm -hmm. um, baddies literally put a lot of us on the map. I feel like people was watching One More Chance. But... All the Bad Girls fans, like, very supportive. So, you know, of course, they wanted to see the Bad Girls come back. They, I don't feel like they give a fuck about us. They want to see the original Bad Girls come back. But, you know, I feel super appreciated that they, you know, supported me throughout this time as well. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's a, lot of, um, a lot of attention that I've been getting since then. So can you um, give us any hints or teasers about what we could be expecting from the upcoming Baddies reunion? Uh, oh, man. Without getting in trouble. Because yeah. Well, Goose ain't taking my motherfucking episode <laughs> down, bitch. Uh, I would say just a lot of fighting. Just a lot of fighting. Of course, y'all see on the trailer. Um, not a lot of communication. That's all I can say. It, it, it was a lot of fighting, not a lot of communication. That was just it. Other than that, people was themselves, literally. The same shit y'all saw on Baddies is the same shit y'all gonna see at the reunion. Um, how do you feel about the judges? Not the judges, the um, the reunion hosts. Oh, man. Um, I like him. You know Stevie J, right? Yeah, Stevie J. He's hella cool. I like him a lot. I feel like he, he, he hella flirtatious, <laughs> but I don't know. I think like he that's just him. You know, mm -hmm. he got that, 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 mm. That suave. Nigga. Yeah, that suave. So that he fuck nigga. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> fuck him. That's <laughs> he fine as hell. But other than that, like, nah, um, he was hella cool though. He wasn't biased. Mm -hmm. Look, she said what? <laughs> I like CVJ. I don't know why. I it's something about him. And I think it's that player shit. Cause I like that player shit. I don't know why. Um, but other than that, I feel like he was hella cool. He wasn't biased. He was trying to get us to shut the fuck up, but that wasn't happening. So you have mentioned to me that you're on a weight loss journey. Can you walk us yeah. through like um, like what you're doing as far as your weight loss um, situations? So I'm taking these pills that I got from Goal Surgery. Um, I cannot pronounce that shit. And don't it's ask. pills or shots? They're shots. Did I say pills? You did. It's okay. liquor. <laughs> what kind of fucking liquor? It's Revage. Revage. <laughs> What's in there? It's cognac. <laughs> But now I'm taking these shots. Um, they're helping me lose weight, um, like 20 pounds within a month. And then I have um, 
a BBO that I'm getting. Period. Ass bitches. Look, y'all bitches. Y'all Just bitches wait. better wait on it. Because this motherfucking ass finna be fat. And it's, <laughs> the stomach finna be gone. I'm finna be <laughs> at your nigga dough. <laughs> But, um, yes, I have a uh, surgery coming up in Atlanta, actually literally after the fucking audition. So I'm excited about it. Okay. So how do you see your future evolving in the music industry Industry being a plus size um, brown skin woman? Because, you know, they always say, like, you know, light skin women have the advantage in the music yeah. industry, et cetera, et cetera. Like, how do you feel about um, your chances of evolving in the music industry? I feel like I want to evolve in the music industry, but I also want to stay independent because I feel like I can make a little bit more money being independent and I wouldn't have to worry about nobody changing my image, but it would be good to sign a nice deal with nice endorsements and, you know, good shit. I don't want to just sign for a million dollars and then be on my way. Mm -hmm. I want to sign for- I want to be sweetie. Sweetie is fucking fine. That girl, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I love her. I want to go her route because I feel like Sweetie doesn't really care about music. She does it for, like, the notoriety, but she yeah. uses it to get, like, brand deals and, like, bigger yeah. opportunities. Like, I don't think music is Sweetie's passion, but she just used it for, like, another step yeah. on her career. I feel like that, too. And I feel like, shit, she can get by with her look. She's beautiful as hell. She beautiful. can do anything. She can model. She can fucking act. She can mm-hmm. do anything. So. Okay. So. We are going to play another game. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so this Let me is, get the rules right this time, Megan. This one's easy. I'm going to try to explain it a little bit better, okay? All right. So we're doing um, Green Flag or Red Flag Friends Edition. I mean, Baddies Edition. Okay. But it's also the Friends Edition. Because, you know, like, they'd be like, oh, that nigga's a red flag. Oh, that's a green flag. Oh, Jesus. So with man. this game, you're basically, basically going to just tell me if it's a red flag in a friendship or a green flag in a friendship. Okay. Okay. So, um... Refusing to take count, uh, accountability for your actions. That is a red flag. Okay, so a friend that calls you once a month. Red flag. Yeah. Why? Because you're not my friend if you're going to call me once a fucking month. I know, but what if you're busy? You can pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm busy. I'm going to call you right back and then call them right back. A real friend is going to make time for their real friend, period. Okay, a friend that misses your birthday but buys you a really nice gift to make up for it. That's a green flag. <laughs> um, a friend that um, follows your significant other on social media. And not me? No, just like a friend that's super or tries to be close with your significant other. No, that's other. a red flag. Get away. Because oh. I don't... I don't I would prefer my friends not to follow my man on yeah, social media. Yeah, like, because for what? For? I don't care if that's your bro. Don't be following my nigga. Period. No, fuck that. <laughs> y'all not for you. If y'all wasn't friends before we met, bitch, no, no, don't follow my man. So what about a friend that sees your nigga outside doing something he ain't got no business, but don't tell you? Red flag, because bitch, you better tell me the fuck. So you wouldn't act funny, because you know how sometimes, like when you, sometimes you should just, in my opinion, sometimes you should just mind your business. Like I'm gonna tell my friend because that's the person I am, but I get why people mind their business because sometimes the friend end up being mad at you. But I, that is true. But I feel like the reason why the bitch is mad because she already knew she just didn't want to find out. Like that's that's something like a person like, oh, I want to open this letter and I I don't want to read what the fuck it says because it could be a denial letter or acceptance letter. I'm just going to accept it for what it is. People really just get mad because they don't want to know. Mm-hmm. They want to still live that, that life like, oh, my man is only for me. Bitches is delusional. Delusional. <laughs> um, so a friend that never posts or likes your Instagram comment, like uh, posts or likes your content on Instagram. Oh, that's a green flag. Like I, that, You don't have to like shit. Like really? you know, no. I be feeling away when my friends don't like hype me up because I hype up all my friends. Because you follow so many people on Instagram and Facebook. But I'm your like, real really? friend. I need to see comments <laughs> under like go bitch, friend I'm a, go. Look, I'm gonna come up to you. Double tap, bitch. I liked your photo today on Instagram. It's so cute. <laughs> oh <laughs> God, <laughs> bro! I'll take my friend picture and be like, yes, under the comments as if I didn't just take the picture. I, you know, That's I me. will too. But I have a lot of people. That I've been knowing for years. And them motherfuckers don't comment on shit. Or like they'll just keep scrolling. I'm like, so you just gonna keep scrolling? Okay. It don't make you feel away? No, not really. Make my mama feel away though. My mama be like, this motherfucker on my pants. <laughs> but I'm like, no, it don't make me feel away though. Um, I really could care less if somebody like my shit. Okay, somebody on Instagram but doesn't answer the phone. Oh, that's a red flag, cause I know you see me calling you, bitch. Like, I'm about to call you from a block number now. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> okay, so. 
Um, we're gonna do. We're about to wrap it up. So the outro. Um, basically, you tell the listeners and viewers where they can find you, all your social media um, tags, all your upcoming projects, and your camera. And then after the outro, we gonna get into some more juicy questions. These questions are only available for Patreon members. So if y'all want to know all the juice, the tea, and the scoop on the reunion, all the other shit that we can't talk about right now. Join us on Patreon, um, the Hollywood Group Chat Patreon. But go ahead and give us your outro, and then we're going to cut to the Patreon question. Okay. Y'all can find me on Instagram at rollypolysm underscore. Honestly, I don't even be on no other social medias because You don't do boring. TikTok? Girl. TikTok is so fun. Let me tell you something. TikTok better count they motherfucking days. I post anything... On there, probably like with some booty shorts or a bikini, just standing there or something, they ban me. Y'all need to start accepting more bodies. But other than that, just find me on Instagram. Y'all can find me on 